Last video, we got our 1340 GT completely set up, leveled, and straight. So we thought today we might just do some cuts and find the limits of what we can do with this machine and basic general purpose carbide insert tooling. We'll show you what it looks like when the machine's happy with what it's cutting and when it's unhappy and talk about why that might be. Let's get started. Just like always with the lathe, we start by facing off the saw cut from the end of our stock. We made the test bar last video out of aluminum, so we thought we might play around with some steel today. We've got some 4140 heat treat, and we're just going to experiment a bit. One of my coworkers saw me cutting it on the bandsaw and asked what I was making with it. I told him we're making noise and we're making chips. Next, we'll just drill a quick center so that we can add some tail support. This is inch stock, and it's only sticking out a couple inches from the chuck. So we may not need tail support now, but we will as the stock gets thinner and our cuts get bigger. We'll be proactive and do this now. We'll start with a light pass, just 25 thou to gain concentricity and get under the mill scale. We're using our carbide tooling that comes with our VXA master kit, and that's a good general purpose set for a wide range of materials. I also swapped to a quick change tool post for convenience. I experimented a bit with speeds and feeds before we started rolling and settled on 770 RPMs with about 3 thou carriage movement per revolution. I tried one speed faster and that went okay but the chips came off a little hotter than I would prefer and the surface finish was a little better at this slower speed. I want to briefly mention how I arrive at starting points with speeds and feeds because that's a question I get a lot. There are plenty of free speed feed calculators on the internet but I use a phone app called CNC Machinist Calculator Pro. If I remember, it was a couple bucks and I've used it for years. And because it's on my phone, if my boss walks by and sees me on the phone, I have plausible deniability that I'm doing something productive. No, I'm not on eBay bidding on stuff I don't need during work hours. I'm, I'm calculating speeds and feeds over here. Obviously, that light pass isn't going to be a problem, so we'll just crank up the cutting depth until we have trouble. This is a 70 thou pass, and while it cut nicely, it didn't want to break off a chip, so we got a bit of a bird's nest here. 4140 can be stringy, so I'm not surprised. I do like the blue color of the chip, so I think we're at the right spindle speed, but I'm going to crank the feed a little to see if we can get the chip to break, or at least curl up tightly and go in one direction. I just wanted to include this shot because I think too many machining channels only show the winds, and that gives a false sense of how easy machining with an untested material and tool combination is. No matter what, there's going to be experimentation before you find what works when you're messing with a new material. Here's our second attempt at 70 thou depth of cut. We left the spindle speed the same, but cranked the feed from 3 thou per revolution to about 5.5 thou per revolution. It still didn't break a chip, but it did wrap the long string of chips to the side and out of the way, and that chip color was still a nice blue, so we'll call it good. In the testing I did on this material before shooting, I found that the cut looks basically identical to this, up to about an eighth inch depth of cut. That's 125 thou. I won't bore you by making you watch a bunch of videos in a row that look exactly the same, so let's get to the good part next, and do a cut that's too big. All right, let's give it the beans. This is a 200 thou cut, and while it doesn't go well, the machine never bogs down. We get some noise and chatter, and the part slips back in the chuck, you can even see it coming away from the center, but the lathe itself doesn't stall or even complain much. Let's mess a little with spindle speed to see if slower smooths out that chatter, or if we really are going too big with this general purpose carbide tool. We try again a little slower, cranking it down to 308 RPMs, and while we still don't get great results, the lathe chugs right through. This goes to show that you usually run out of rigidity before you run out of horsepower. And honestly, there are things that can be done about that. I would bet that if we change the general purpose tool out for something meant specifically for roughing, and replace the compound with a solid mount directly to the cross slide, we'd probably get this cut to work. And if you dealt with the chatter by selecting the right tool and stiffening the setup, then you also don't have the hammering effect that causes the part to slip in the chuck. But before doing all that, ask yourself, why am I taking 400 thou off at a time when I could just take two passes, or buy the right size stock in the first place? Sometimes we're so busy wondering if we can, we forget to ask if we should. 
but I'm glad we gave it a shot to see what an obviously too big cut looks like on this lathe. So there you have it. You can find the limits of any machine, and with the 1340 GT, cutting 4140 heat treat steel with general purpose carbide, that limit is about a quarter of an inch at a time. Pound for pound, I'd say that's not bad. It can be instructive to purposely go a little too far on cutting depth, so thanks for stopping by and watching us push this machine to its limit in the name of science. We'll see you next time.